Gentlemen, thanks very much for uh, giving us and the, the audience here at, at GMIS your, your time today and uh, the benefit of your insights. I just want to begin by um, taking a look back into the past before we step forward into the future. So, uh, I mean, the story and success of the last sort of, you know, 40 or 50 years for the UAE is quite well known. Um, so the transformation of, uh, of the Emirates um, economically and uh, also politically and their influence in the world to become one of the, the world's major logistics and trading hubs um, and, and uh, important business centers globally um, from a, a beginning that was very, very different is, uh, is an incredible story. Um, thinking about how that happened, what's your opinion, uh, each of you, about the key success factor? What is the, the one thing that the, the UAE did uh, particularly well that you think was important uh, to that success. If we start with Xi Al Gagawi. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I think one of the most important elements that had happened is leadership. We live in a region that we've seen leader that break countries and leader that take country to places that even the population couldn't imagine. I think the most important factor of the success of UAE, we had leader who created a nation who believed in the ability of the people, but also they were realistic within their society and within the surrounding. And what had happened since 1971 to now, it's a miracle. If you look at the country, an early 70, barely it had road. Today you have highway in the sky. I mean, if you look at Emirates, at Dahad, Al Arabiya, Fly Dubai, almost you have 450 planes, 500 planes, the largest international fleet globally. And you go back to the 60s, your runway, runway was a dirt runway. So it is a human journey for all of us. A lot of us, we've seen what had happened, but if I look at one success factor, I'll say leadership. Okay. The late Sheikh Zayed, he believed that he had a mission. He looked at the people. He was very much open for new idea, but he worked himself in the field to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And he was a role model for all of us. Okay. <laughs> and Your Excellency Al Mubarak, so apart from leadership, um, which I think is, 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 is a critical factor, is there something else you would pull out as being uh, a success factor? Yeah, I think uh, echoing. Uh, Busaid's point, no, no question. I have to first start by agreeing 100% that the leadership, leadership aspect that we've been blessed with in the UAE is, um, is quite an incredible advantage. If you look at the story, it's, it's really not, nothing short of a miracle. Who would have believed if we go back to 1970 as a starting point for this conversation, and look at where we are as the United Arab Emirates here in 2017. I mean, very hard to have possibly dreamed or imagined uh, that that starting point in 1970 to where we are today uh, could have been achieved. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because of leadership, it's because of the, uh, I think the clear st strategic vision that was always there from day one. Now, many will say, true, that's all good, but you also had the, the natural resources that helped speed up this evolution and this development of the United Arab Emirates. But you know what? Resources without leadership uh, doesn't really mean uh, things can be achieved. You know, I will give you an example. If you go back again to that, let's say, a starting point of 1970 for the sake of this example I'm going to give. 
and you look at two countries. One, the UAE, and the other, let's say, in North Africa, and let's take Libya as an example. Similar starting point, similar population size, plus or minus, uh, similar in terms of um, natural resources, again, plus or minus, uh, similar size to an extent, but then you look at uh, Libya in this case, with the additional advantages of location, uh, to the, in the Mediterranean, vis-a-vis -vis the big markets uh, in Europe, uh, uh, wealth in terms of uh, not just natural resources, archaeological and historic resources. So if you're going to decide on, a, on an industry like tourism, uh, the advantages you have in a country like, like, uh, like Libya with, with the wealth it has in terms of uh, the history and, and the touristic uh, uh, archaeological sites and, and historic sites that can that have incredible benefits, and then you know hundreds and hundreds of miles of Mediterranean Sea seafront. So if you're going to start at that point and you are going to think which one of these two horses in 2017 will go further, I think most likely you would have probably I think given the starting point. Uh, bet on, in this case, Libya. But the difference is exactly to my colleague uh, Busaid's point, leadership. Leadership and the ability to then direct resources, create new industries, and from day one have a clear diversification strategy that didn't just focus on the utilization of natural resources, but rather building a functional economy that is diverse and that is sustainable. I mean, the UAE certainly has been one of the uh, more successful economies in this region in terms of diversification. And so that um, path through the last few decades, I, I guess, is, is a bit unique and then we can pick it out as, as, as a clear success. But I mean, the world is, uh, is changing fast. We've been talking about here many of the, uh, the, the trends that are changing the world. When you look forward to the next 50 years, um, what, what do you think the UAE looks like in uh, 2067? Um, what, what kind of country do we have? Uh, last week we had actually the cabinet uh, meeting. And in the cabinet meeting, we decided that by 2071, the centennial of UAE mm -hmm. would like to be the best nation and the strategy was based on His Honor Sheikh Mohammed Bizai's speech that he addressed youth almost three weeks ago, a month ago. For us in UAE, the path is very clear. Within this path, we have a plan till 2021, the, our national agenda, and after that we have a 50 years plan till 2071, mm -hmm. based on the vision of His Hana Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. But within this milestone, we have a couple of stops. There is, I'll say, a short term, which is almost 10 years. What we'd like to focus on. We're focusing on sustainable energy. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on 3D printing. We're focusing on software, airspace, and if we bear in mind we live in a time that the time frame is changing, it will change. And always I believe because of technology, human resources is changing also. So, before you had only one mindset or one human power, let me put it this way. If you go back 50, 60, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. And whatever is happening in technology, you have collective 
human power, uh, mind power. What I mean here, we live in a very interesting time. The evolution of technology, it will change the way we live. This is always I've been saying. This is the first second of the first minute, mm -hmm. of the first hour, of the first day, when it comes to technology. We haven't seen anything yet. So for us, we are not a big nation with a huge population. But we know how to leverage technology for our own industry and to maximize the brain power of UAE. So the short term, we'll foc I told you what we are focusing on. Most probably in the next 50 years, we are looking at space. For example, just I'll give you an example. For us, space is important. And I think we'll see a lot of company even so, it's driven right now mainly by government, but we'll see, we'll see the private sector is getting involved in space. And in September, we have the first retreat, government retreat, that's gonna be federal and local retreat, mm -hmm. where we're getting everybody together, and they're gonna give us a more detailed plan on 2071 strategy, strategy where we'll be. But the future will be based also on human, a machine, uh, uh, just I'm uh, moving away from. If you look at technology and where it's going, we know that robot will play a major role in our life. We know that artificial intelligence will be a major role in UAE economy, robot, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So we'll maximize that for the benefit of our industry and so many different fields but that will be based on also education. Our education have to change. Mm -hmm. And we started, just an example, coding, it's gonna be across every single grade right now in UAE. So everybody, every single student who finish high school will be a coder because job of the future will be based on coder actually. So that will reinvent even education. Mm -hmm. You need university in certain field, if you're a coder, you need to go to four years college, or you can get out of high school and you are the best coder. So we are looking at a holistic view, bearing in mind the evolution of technology, which will change so rapidly that government have to be part of it. You don't wanna receive it, you wanna create it. You mentioned um, human capital. I'm wondering, to take a very specific uh, dimension of that, I mean, what do you think the UAE's population will be in 50 years' time? Do you see it being much bigger or similar size or uh, fewer people and more robots? I think definitely you'll see more utilization of robot and artificial intelligence. I mean, this is a global trend. We know within the next three years, seven million jobs will be replaced by robot or an artificial intelligence. So we are no different. So definitely the use of artificial intelligence will be much higher. The use of robot will be much higher. If you go to <clears throat> Strata, Strata, for example, uh, I was with Bader and he was showing me where they are going. They're using robot. So UAE, it will be a place for talent. That's the way. It doesn't matter. Okay. Today, population doesn't matter. It is how good is your population, that's what matter. Mm -hmm. And we are concentrating on the quality as Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed been stating in his speech. The quality of your population, the quality of your student, the quality of your workforce, that's what matter. Okay. And Your Excellency uh, Al Mubarak, I mean, thinking about your perspective from Mubarala, where um, you are, the, the corporation has a history of taking quite a long-term long vision, so I guess you have some thoughts about uh, the future 40, 50 years away that you need to prepare for. Okay, I think I'll first answer if you, the question you first asked, which is wh where do I see us in 50 years? Yeah. It's impossible to see where we're gonna be in 50 years because it's impossible to predict where industries uh, are gonna be in the next 50 years today. But what I do know with a high level of confidence is that as, as the UAE, we're gonna be there. 
We're going to be there in terms of being competitive and being at the forefront. Mm -hmm. I feel that confidence because, you know, you just heard Busaid talking about how our government is thinking today. This is not a government that's thinking about the past, we're thinking about the future. And that's a, a very important point. Many governments, in, their, uh, in the way they're running, they, they, they are focusing at the, at the past and today. We're lucky that we have a government that's really focusing at the future. Mm -hmm. And that gives a lot of confidence. We've been, for the last 40 plus years, uh, as, the, as the UAE, investing in, in many industries. And I think more correct than, than wrong, we made the right choices. Mm -hmm. Many industries that we invested in, in the country, in terms of both government and private sectors, I think were the right choices for the, the for the, for the uh, were the right choices for the time, be it the industries we invested in in the 1970s, in the 1980s, the 90s, the 2000s. And you look at it today, that's why many of our uh, companies are thriving, uh, be it uh, in the airline business, be it in the aluminum smelting business, be it in the petrochemical business, be it in the free zone business. We have thrived because we've made the right choices or more, the, more correct choices. Mm -hmm. Uh, than not over the last 40 years. So that in itself is a good indicator for you as we look at the future. The future, it's about us focusing on education, making sure we are at the forefront in terms of the output, output that's coming out uh, from our um, schools, universities, uh, and higher education, and making sure that we are competitive in terms of infrastructure. That comes in both physical infrastructure, but then legal and regulatory uh, and economic uh, incentive uh, infrastructure to make sure we consistently be at the forefront of being a country that is growing and going to be competitive economically. With that mindset, that gives us already, I think, an advantage. Um, when we talk about the future, when we talk about 3D printing and how that's going to re revolutionize manufacturing, when we talk about robotics, uh, automation. You know, to be honest, all of these actually fall into the advantages that we can mobilize and move very quickly. Our size, though small, can be a disadvantage in terms of uh, volume, in terms of population, etc. But it's actually also a very big advantage because we can move. Mm -hmm. We've shown that we can move and we can be uh, a, very, a very important hub, not just from a regional perspective, but from a global perspective. The key for us is now we have to think at the next 10 years, 20 years, invest wisely. When it comes to, now, you are, now I'm putting my investment hat on, mm -hmm. we have to be wise and smart in terms of the investments we make and really pick and choose the areas that we think are gonna be the industries and the investment sectors of the future. Mm -hmm. I agree with Busaid, I think, particularly the sectors he mentioned, uh, artif artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, automations, industries uh, that, will, that will be uh, focused on that and advan uh, you know, advantage with that. We have a, a clean slate. We can actually work very quickly in these sectors and we can provide the right advantages to be uh, a center of excellence, uh, not just in the region, but I think globally. We don't think anymore, I think, locally or regionally. We have to continuously con uh, look at ourselves from a global perspective and I think we have that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned before uh, choices that have been made in the past. I don't know if we can maybe take that forward and ask you, um, I mean, the UAE is doing a lot, uh, a lot right, and I know you, the, the country has thought hard about its policies, um, but there's always new challenges, and is there anything you think that um, the UAE is not doing today that it will need to be doing in five years? You know, the good thing of sitting next to uh, minister is to then you just flip the question first to him. <laughs> <laughs> so in respect, in due respect, I'll, 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 I'll have Mohammed answer that first. Okay. <laughs> so what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> in life, life is based on challenges. A lot of things we should do, but do we have the resources for it? Is it the right time? 
to do it or no. We are quite, you have to understand, life is very complex. Our job is to simplify it somehow. We live within a region that changes take place almost on a daily basis. We live in a world that political change and economic change move quite fast. We have to know our strength and we have to identify area that we are really good at. There is a reality check. As a journalist, you know exactly what's your field, what you're good at. As a nation, we understand that. But also the whole process is evolving on a daily base. We decided that we'd like to be a global player. Yes. It's a decision. Do you want to be a regional player or a global player? We decided that we'll integrate our economy and our society in, a global, in the global arena. And there is a plus and minus for that. I think the most important thing that for a nation is to have goal and to have strategy. I'm diverting a bit from your, your, your question here. Because there is a bigger picture in the whole thing. And, and the audience have to know why we do whatever we are doing it. You, know, just, you don't wake up in the morning and you decide that you want to do that. We are in the mode of nation building. This is a nation building. We are a young nation compared to other. To other. But also we, have, we are very ambitious. And through the experience that started in 71 and before that, I think there's tremendous confidence in the ability of nation building and building human resources, infrastructure, industry, and soft power also as, as a nation. So from small place, a desert place, had no almost road, no hospital, no infrastructure, UAE became a global player here. So whatever we do in UAE, we're doing it with a notion that our job is to create a platform for the region to look up the need people like Khaldun, like the audience here said, you know, why they can do whatever they can do in UAE. They're like us. So we live in a region that there is tremendous issue, social, political, religion, economic issue. And I think our purpose is beyond just economy. And our purpose beyond politics. Our purpose is we are, we are a nation that have a mission in life. The mission is how to enhance human life across our region. This is what we do. So I, I diverted from your question because I think it's important to understand why we do whatever we do. Why we wake up in the morning and we run, everybody run in this, in this country. Because it's been embedded within everybody in UAE that we have a mission in life. And our mission is to improve the region actually. Mm -hmm. To understand what we are, do what we are doing in a political arena, the social arena, and uh, economic arena, we are doing it with a purpose here. Challenges will be there. Sector that we need to tackle always will be, will be there. Uh, evolution in, in our economy will be, will be there. But we decided that we'll embrace changes. We are not afraid from the future. Actually, we, we move on and we hug the future because we believe that the future will be brighter. Mm -hmm. We have that hope, and we are building that hope. And really, we believe that 
UAE can contribute to the human ability in so many different sectors. In this part of it, but also where the industry will go, that's another sector, space, and other sector. So we are a nation that have a calling in life. And our calling is very simple, is how do you improve human life regionally and globally? We're, uh, our clock is unfortunately ticking down, but um, I want Thank to you, before, for passing, uh, the before <laughs> that's what I do best. <laughs> before we get to the end, I, I do want to spend some time on some of the the coming challenges um, that that the UAE will be facing. Um, I mean, when when I look at the UAE from an outside perspective, um, I mean, I, I see uh, I think three kind of key challenges for the country. So one is the long-term decline of oil, so in terms of reserves, but also in terms of price and how much it's used in the national economy, the implications, sorry, in the global economy, uh, the implications that has for, for finances in particular. Uh, I think about um, the role that the UAE has built as a hub for the region. Um, and of course, that's really been assisted by the fact that the two biggest countries in the area, so Iran and Saudi Arabia, have not been very open. Um, the UAE has been, so that's been a real advantage. As uh, on the assumption that those countries do slowly open up over, over the next decade or so, does that challenge the UAE's place? Um, and I guess the third uh, challenge I would think about is in relation to uh, climate change and livability, about whether it's actually going to be, well, sustainable and um, uh, and pleasant from a lifestyle perspective to, to live in the Middle East if temperatures are you know, three or four degrees higher in 2050 or 2060 than they are now. I mean, they're my thoughts on some of the challenges. I wonder if you could either share your responses to those or, or whether there are other challenges that you're focusing on. Okay, I'll take a shot at this first. I think the three points you mentioned are all relevant. Um, let's start with the first one. You know, we've been living this challenge I would say for the last 30 years. It's not new to us. Uh, we have programmed ourselves. And I think the clear intention that our government and our country has, has really decided and, and the path it has took for the last 30 years has been a diversification track. The results you see today. Today, I think among the major oil producer, producers uh, not just in the region, but in the world. The UAE has gone a long way and comes really at the forefront in terms of a successful uh, diversification strategy and a, uh, uh, where oil is no longer represented in the same way it was represented, I would say, 30 to 40 years ago. So we've been working on this for a long time, and we've been preparing ourselves for the day, whenever that day comes, where either we run out of that resource, natural resource, or its economic benefits are so severely uh, affected uh, that they no, no longer can, can, can contribute in the way they have been contributing. That challenge doesn't worry me. I think we are well on that track. We are well developed on that track. I don't agree, first of all, with the, with the point that uh, oil is declining and that oil in the short, medium term, and even in the immediate long term, uh, is a commodity that will lose its, uh, its uh, intrinsic value. I don't agree with that, I think. Uh, so let me just be clear on that. But I do believe that we are well positioned to handle the cyclicality of this commodity in a, in a very efficient way. And we will continue to develop this economy, invest in the economy, and, and make our economy able to efficiently handle the cyclicality that comes with this resource that is, in reality, an important resource uh, of the country. So that's my, uh, the first challenge you, you mentioned. The second challenge, uh, remind me, before the climate one was the... Uh, uh, will, the will the opening of Saudi and Iran yes. have an impact? And that, again, 
we live in a competitive environment. We have constantly lived in that competitive environment. And we have constantly, I would say, thrived in that competitive environment. That com competitive environment changes all the time. Who is you, who are you competing with today is different than who you'll be competing with in five years, and is different possibly than who you have been competing with for the last 20 years. What is gonna distinguish you is your ability to stay competitive and stay ahead of the game. And this is, again, another area where I would say we in the UAE have a high confidence in that we will be ahead of the game. Because we don't walk, we run, we sprint, and we will continue to sprint. This, I have no doubt in. Uh, this message, you're not, you're not gonna just hear it from me. It's, it's, it's not my message, it's a consistent message. You will hear it from the leadership, you will hear it from the top executives, you will hear it from the academics, you will hear it from the doctors, you will hear it from anyone you speak to. I think in this room, there's an appreciation that we in the UAE are going forward, are progressing, are running, and are gonna keep sprinting. Because that has been, and will always be the advantage we have as the UAE, and we know that, and therefore we have to continue doing that in a very efficient, sustainable, and intelligent way. Are there any changes that you, th that, um, you think will need to happen specifically in relation to the opening up of Iran and Saudi? You know, we can't predict what changes are gonna happen, but what I can assure you is, we will react mm -hmm. and we will move. And we will always, you know, both as an economy, uh, as businesses, as investors, we will react, we will pivot, and we will always be competitive. That I'm confident in. Okay. Yeah. Minister, would you have to come in? I'll, uh, Khaldun have said everything. I think if you look at our economy, the non-oil economy is 70% of our GDP is done oil, and this is the highest within the region. So our economy is quite diversified. Mm -hmm. If you look at just the tourism sector and the growth in the tourism sector, we have almost over 20 million tourists for a country of almost 9 million. That's almost double our population, and the growth will be tremendous in the next couple of years. So we have a plan. The plan has been working quite well. We monitor it, and today 70% of our GDP is done oil. Mm -hmm. Regarding the second point that you mentioned, the opening of, of the regional market, I think it's going to be good for us. If your neighbor is doing well, you'll do better. What worries me actually is not opening up of, of our region. What worries me is the closing of some big economy globally, you know, protectionism. That's what worried me. So there is a bigger scale, there is a bigger change in the global arena than thus the region. Definitely, the regional economy will open up and we've been waiting for it and we want it to happen because we are ready. Our economy is open. If you look at the open sky policy, for example, why our airlines is among the best airlines in the world? because as a nation we decided that we'll have an open sky policy. We, do, we are not, there is no protectionism. Well, Al-Tihad, Emirates, al Arabiya, Fly Dubai, they have to compete with the best airlines in the world. To be fit, you need to train with the fittest. So we believe the open economy, regionally, globally, is good for us because we are very much globalized nation. Your th third point was about the environment. What will happen if the environment changed by two degrees, basically, the heat? Uh, the globe is facing tremendous challenge. And some major and this year country are contributing to the climate change, actually, globally where we are, whatever we are doing here in UAE, we are fighting that. If you look at our plan for sustainable energy, it's been tremendous. Khaldun is responsible for one. If we look at our solar plan, uh, a week ago we launched the largest solar plant globally, actually. So we are working quite heavily 
when it comes to alternative energy, when it comes to environment, when it comes to technology that will insulate building, malls, our life. But we need to bear in mind also there is evolution technology. Even with heat, today you can walk outdoor and can be 5% cooler than usual through certain technology. So we're looking at, in life always there is challenges. You know, if nation been through challenges. We, we live in a desert. We live in a place that have a harsh climate. If you look at our, even our policy when it comes to space, we, we look at, we, we are taking these challenges that will be in Mars and we said, how do you fix it here in Earth? So whatever we do, it have purpose, actually. So challenges will be there. Our job as a human being and throughout human history is looking at challenge and facing these challenges. And that was part of human evolution, actually, when you look at it. That's why we're here today because we've been facing challenges, but we've been fixing all the challenges that we face as a nation. Nobody thought UAE will exist even in 1971 when it was formed by Sheikh Zayed. A lot of countries said, they said that's gonna fail, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. And 46 years later, we are here, we are very strong, and we are a model for this region. Just to add to uh, Mohammed's point here, you know, if you had 20 years ago thought, will we, by 2017, have 20 million tourists in the UAE while we have 40 to 45 degree temperatures in the summer? Again, real big challenge. Well, guess what? We did it. We have 20 million plus. We will continue to grow. And we have 45 almost degree temperatures in, in, in the summer. So, you know, the climate challenge is a challenge. Uh, but I have, again, the same confidence that we will always be able to meet that challenge and find ways to, uh, to tackle it. You know, when we talked about solar, and I, and I want to mention this point because it's a good example. We started investing in solar technology, and we have a company, uh, as an example, Mustard. And at that point, a lot of people challenged the concept of why is an oil-producing nation investing in renewable energy, a source of energy that could be very competitive to its bread and butter, oil and gas. Because again, we saw the direction. Renewable energy will become a very comp competitive source of energy. And we wanted to be part of that revolution from day one. When we started investing in solar energy and the technology, solar was at 60 cents a kilowatt. It was highly uncompetitive. Mm -hmm highly subsidized in its, in its ability to be industrialized or to be part of power grids around the world. But we invested. We kept investing and we kept going with that technology. And over the last six years, we've gone from 60 cents a kilowatt being a player within this industry to being at the forefront of this industry where we are now building a solar plant in Dubai at the lowest cost per kilowatt in the world of two cents a kilowatt. We've gone from 60 cents to two cents, where it's not only competitive and unsubsidized, and unsubsidized mm -hmm. it's actually a, a real high quality form of energy that we are at the forefront in and we are competitive globally. Not, again, a local or regional player, but a global player. And that's why I go back to the whole discussion we're having here, why both Mohammed and myself have such a high confidence about the future and had such a positive aspiration at the ability of the UAE to cons consistently be at the forefront and competitive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It, uh, it is a very uh, optimistic picture um, being painted. I think one... Um, thread that I pull out from what you've been discussing is agility as, as, being, uh, as being a key factor. So 
challenges in the past, I guess more challenges in the future, um, some of which we can predict now, but uh, many of which we won't know about. Um, so certainly we'll all be watching closely to see how the UAE uh, adapts to these challenges uh, as in, in the next few decades. Uh, thanks very much for giving us your time. Um, in fact, uh, a little bit extra. <laughs> so thank you, uh, please do thank the uh, students.